we are live Okay, good evening everyone and welcome to today's webinar on live pro profile evaluation session with Whitman School of Management. I'm very happy to introduce doc Dr. Sri Ramakrishnan, who is Assistant Director Graduate Recruitment at Whitman School of Management at Syracuse University. So I, on behalf of Jamburi and the entire, and the students, I extend a very warm welcome to you, Dr. Sri. And, uh, because we have this uh, resume profile evaluation session, I'm going to hand over uh, the mic to her to take us through it. And we have shortlisted here four resumes, four profile, whom we will um, critique on. So I hope everybody is re ready with this sort of a session. It's going to be new, it's going to be interesting, and we are looking forward to it. So uh, she, maybe you can just take us forward. One important thing that I want to state here is, uh, you have the chat option where you can ask questions, but just wait uh, after this uh, session is over in terms of uh, let her first evaluate all the profiles and then I will open the floor to Q&A. And at that point you can ask questions on the chat box. So over to you, Shri. Give me one second. I'm just downloading all of them because I think that's easier. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for inviting me to uh, this uh, information session. I hope I'm the first school that's kicking this off for this new year. So happy new year to everybody. And uh, it's nice to see you guys again. So what I wanted to do today while I'm just very quickly downloading my stuff here is understand if people have thought a little bit about what type of interaction they want during the session and what type of questions they want to ask uh, in terms of uh, a resume evaluation or a profile evaluation. So if you can throw your questions into the chat box, that would be helpful for me to sort of go through as I am potentially looking through the four resumes that I was uh, given to to uh, critique and also uh, sort of take this forward because I want this to be an interactive conversation. I don't want this to be something where you feel I'm talking at you. I would rather talk with you. Um, having said that, the next thing I wanted to know is are my four candidates here, the ones who are having their resumes evaluated today? So let me just pull up the names. I have uh, Sushant Shapori. If you are, just drop your, say yes. Yes, you're here, okay. Um, Treyans Jane, also here, yes, okay. Uh, then there is, uh, Manikandan Krishnamurti, you're here too, excellent. And then there is Gaurav Harayan. Yes, okay. Who wants to go first out of these four? <laughs> Just raise your hand if you want to go first. Yeah, we have two, two attendees yeah. have said. I wouldn't mind. Okay, excellent. So let's see, I'm gonna try share my screen. I'm not sure how this is gonna work because I didn't download all of them, but. So, uh, um, so are we doing Sushant first? Yes. 
Sushant, are you comfortable in, uh, do you want to switch on your mic and video as well? If you are comfortable, let us know so that we can do that also. Well, it's not about it's you're comfortable. This is yeah. you're applying yeah. to B school. Yeah. So you have to do this. Right. <laughs> Don't be camera shy. <laughs> so Prashant, uh, you can switch on for Sushant mic and video. Okay. So I have this, let me see, is this? Yes, there he is. So is everybody able to see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. All right. Hi, Sushant. I can't hear you, buddy. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 I feel like the <laughs> Verizon call. <laughs> Can you hear me now? <laughs> but okay. So thanks for you know being one of the brave souls uh, who wanted to have your uh, profile evaluated on this webinar. Hey, so, thanks to Jamburi and you for taking the time out and helping me out with this. Sure. So you have an interesting profile, and if I'm understanding correctly, you have about like a little over four years of work X. Correct. Right? So a couple of things that stand out, um, well, before I go into that, what did you use this resume for? Was it for a job? And when did you last yeah. update it? When did uh, you last update it? It's updated, updated it? recently. It's updated quite recently and okay. used it for a job. Yeah. Okay. So, one of the first things I'm going to say, using this as an example, for applying to an academic institution, when you are suggesting that, I mean, you're, excuse me, submitting your application, we will require a business resume, yeah. right? And when institutions are asking you for a business resume, you want to be sure that you are tailoring your resume to the intent or the objective for which you are applying. In this particular case, that happens to be uh, applying to a business school, business not school. for a job, right? The other thing you want to, uh, and when I say you, I'm not specifically directing it at you, but I'm saying this in general, because I think sure, this is I general understand. information. But then when I say something specific to you from your stuff, I will you know, uh, specifically address you, okay? So, um, Another, another thing the students want to think about when you are uh, submitting a resume for B-School is when we say we want a business resume, we're looking at understanding your educational and your professional background, all right? Okay, so Sean, now I'm gonna take this specific to your profile over here. First thing, to turn on your mic, please. So the first thing when you look at this, now pretend you are not Sushant Shapori, you are actually a member of the admissions committee. And when you look at this resume, what's the first thing that stands out to you? Why do you want to get into a business school? Absolutely not. The first mm -hmm. thing that stands out over here, just in the layout of um, the, the profile, right? Just in the layout of how the paper is is your name is way in way bigger font than in anything mm -hmm. else on the page, right? Yep. And there is also mm -hmm. an image. So one of mm -hmm. the first things that everybody on this call you want to think about is the type of business school that you are applying for. I understand and I had to actually clarify this with uh, Jean-Marie before this call and they were, you know, kind enough to explain to me that some Indian business schools potentially do require you to have a picture and um, therefore it's understandable why you have a picture. I'm not sure in how many jobs and industries across the country in India you need to have a picture, but if you are applying to a US business school, having an image is actually uh, discriminatory. Therefore, we don't require a picture. That's one of the first things all of you want to take note of, uh, irrespective of which B school you're applying for, right? 
in the States. And I would also think that's the case in Europe, but I'm not going to speak for them. I'm speaking primarily for US institutions and, and uh, for my school, right? So that's one of the things. So then if you, if you take the image out and you also reduce this, now why am I saying this name is in much bigger font than anything else? The, the attention is then brought in there. And this is my social science training coming into play. When you, when you do that, what it does is, it's almost like saying you're highlighting your name and that importance, giving that more importance than anything else in your profile. Does that make sense? Got it. Yeah. So like, this is about yeah. like what? Two and a half inches on the top of your header, yep. at least yep. roughly. So now two and a half inches of your header, we tear it down. So you want to keep like the generic, you know, one. So now suddenly it opens up space, right? So if you yeah. treat this document, this page as prime real estate, and mm -hmm. we're building a house, right? Now, if we're building the house, are we going to give space to a huge garden and very tiny space to living? Or are we going to, which is not bad. I mean, if that's the goal, why not? I mean, if I'm building a public park, that's exactly what I would do. Or if I'm going to build, you know, a cottage with a lot of greenery. Like, So what is the goal, right? Ultimately, what's the goal? Okay. So that's why I said, if you are using this resume to apply for B-School and that's the goal, then you want to adjust your resume. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. got it. So now the next thing with B-School is I have to go scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down before I get to your educational degree. One of the first things that B-School at comms want to know is do you meet the degree equivalency requirements? Yeah, right? So if I can't quickly find your educational background, it's, it's sort of like, okay, where is this candidate? How many different things do I have to see? Yeah, mm -hmm. keep in mind, uh, admissions committees do this differently because some people, some committees have big teams, uh, some committees have smaller teams, right? Like so, or recruitment teams and admissions teams. And some of us have to do double duty. So, which means you're not only recruiter, you're also being on ATCOM, you might be for some programs, you might not be for all programs, or it's required that you input your recommendation into the notes, which is then looked at by the larger committee. Irrespective of how it is, this is something, again, the goal here is B-School, right? Remember the prime real estate yeah. and what yeah. is the goal to build your structure? So you want to change that. The other, other thing I would say is uh, overall, this looks like a nice readable format, but what this takes away from you again is look at the different fonts that you have just in this section of education and certifications and too many things in blocks, in block capitals, takes away importance. Mm -hmm. Block capitals that typically you use when you wanna highlight something or if it's a name, right? So it takes mm -hmm. away the importance of what exactly, I, and even this, I had to go over twice, and this could be me, because I am, it is Saturday morning, okay? <laughs> so, so take this with a grain of salt, how you will. But first, I noticed Institute of Hotel Management, but I was like, okay, but where is the actual degree name? And then it took a moment, oh, you mentioned it here on the side. Your intention was probably it will stand out, but because you also have a bunch of other things which are capitalized in mm -hmm. right one after the other, it doesn't really achieve that purpose. Does that make sense? I'm so sure. the other the other thing you so so you might want to move this right up on top. You want to move it right under if you're giving your name. If your name is going to be here, the, the thing that you've done with the phone number and email is actually good. If you also have a LinkedIn profile, I would say put that in there because um, resume templates these days, you're moving away from giving out too much of your personal information, right? There is a lot of concern about um, unpleasant things happening when too much personal information is revealed. So taking that away is fine. You could have your name and just list your contact information because you do want to know how we can get in touch with you. And please be careful. Uh, this is in general that I'm stating when you are updating your, your stuff, take some time. Don't do it in a rush because I've personally seen some 
um, content where Gmail is uh, listed as Gfail <laughs> in a quick type, like a typo. Uh, you might not pay attention to it. You may not register it because you're just, your brain is thinking, you know, I put my email address, but there could be a typo in there. So when you're changing things around, just be, or G-M-I-A-L instead of A-I-L, right? These are, these are natural and they're common. So just be mindful. The, the other thing I would say is like this entire section of your profile, because this is not for a job, right? So again, this potentially could be removed because for me, it, as, as a recruiter who's looking at, okay, does this candidate fit in with my program? It doesn't do much. It tells me, okay, if, if you are coming from a hospitality industry, and you are from a uh, an undergrad degree in hospitality management, um, I would expect to see things like this in terms of you have to be a team player, you have mm -hmm. to be you know, uh, specialized in uh, guest, guest experiences and improving them because that is a given, isn't it? But things that you've mentioned here, like maybe business analytics or revenue management strategies, you want to use another section in your resume as having skill sets. And you've put it under professional skills where you've actually lumped all your analytical skills, analytics skills under professional skills because you're using it, or if I'm understanding correctly, now I'm trying to get into your head here, is, um, you're trying to, one of two things happen. Either the template that you had or used did not allow you to change this header or this subheading from professional skills into anything else. So therefore you have to go with it, which sometimes does happen. Or secondly, you thought, well, I learned all of these things in the context of my profession. So therefore I'm going to keep it that way. Right? Absolutely, so, correct. But, it's the second one. Okay, see, so, so okay. Um, but what you want to think about is um, while that thinking is correct, again, when you're tailoring this for, for uh, a different purpose, like uh, an academic purpose, we want to see what are your different skill sets. So even if you see proficient in Microsoft Office, is there a certification potentially that you have? Like I have an Excel certification, I have basic Excel, I have advanced Excel, what have you. Uh, and then all these other uh, tools that you have listed, they are specific to hotel management. So you guys tend to learn a bunch of things which are not necessarily available as general analytics content. So is there something else that you would want to present in terms of having additional skill sets which um, you did not list here in terms of your technological skills, right? It, it's not a negative. So, so, so sometimes it's very easy to think, oh, I don't have this and I don't have that. And that's one of the things I wanted to point out in this uh, webinar, just because you're looking at someone's uh, resume being critiqued here, don't assume that everybody has to have the same background. Then we would all have clones. We would not have diversity in the classroom. Right. Just keep in mind, everybody comes with something uh, that you need to present to us and say that this is what you're sharing and this is what I have. But you also want to make sure that these two pages that you're using, like I said, prime real estate, you want to present the best thing mm -hmm. that you want to put out. Right. So moving very quickly, um, I would remove references from here. OK, okay? because. The resume is, is entirely for you, right? So references would come under letters of recommendation because we applications, uh, B-School applications typically ask you for letters of recommendation. So you can just input the content over there, take it out of the resume, use the resume for you, right? So um, if you want to, uh, let's see, let's just go very quickly here. Uh, you did achievements. So this looks more like you've received awards or honorary mentions or, you know, honors and awards could be a title that you could use instead of achievements, right? So because you seem to have lumped two things here together. Now, received appreciation email from the office of, who, uh, you know, the CEO of Hilton for 
delivering. So this is something, again, which is very specific to your industry, right? For the hotel industry. Um, because if you were to do something in terms of like multiple appreciation emails. So, so as an example, if I, were go if I was going to apply to another academic institution, let's take my example, right? It, it, it makes no sense for me to go into my accomplishments or honors and uh, say, who received appreciation email from the Dean of the business school. Does that make sense? Now, do you understand the context of what I'm saying? It's very specific to the industry in terms of hotel management uh, and hospitality. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, if you're applying to B school, you do want to mention it, that's fine because yours is the, the uh, hotel that you've been working with happens to be a global chain. So in that sense, yeah. yes. But you want to break this portion down because you've taken your 27% uh, growth here in the cluster, which is actually an accomplishment, right? You've taken that and lumped it with awards. Does that make sense? Got it. And honors. So basically split it among honorary mentions and achievements. I, I understand. Mm -hmm. Achievements or accomplishments, however you want to call it. Yeah. Then the other thing you want to do is now I'm coming back to your your resume is very busy. <laughs> Let's start with that. <laughs> so, um, so because you do have quite a few different types of responsibilities, um, I would say one of the things you want to make sure when you're applying to B school, we like numbers. Hmm. We are a business school. And you're basically shooting yourself in the foot here if you start out by putting in your profile that you have revenue management strategies, but then I don't see budget numbers anywhere or management of revenue. I don't see numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Now, as a ge general comment to the rest of the viewers here <laughs> or other students, I don't want you to randomly put numbers into your resume if it doesn't mean anything. Does that make uh, sense? Don't take don't take like you know six months and turn the six into putting a number. <laughs> and so it has to be relevant in your context. Okay, so so just try and uh, do that. The other the thing fair one. I is, think that we, I would have ahead. done that, but uh, just two things that first of all, this uh, CV was uh, used for apply to another another job. Uh, couldn't give out those numbers and also cannot present it over here due to his certain issues. That's true. So again, that's another thing that you want to uh, be mindful of. That's actually a good point. So if you are looking in your specific industries, when you do sign um, contracts for a job, irrespective of, of, again, which industry, be mindful of your NDAs, right? Non-disclosure agreements and how much content yeah. you can actually reveal. So, but you might be able to give some generic um thing in terms of like handle the budget of approximately something, right? Sure. Or managed sure. a team of, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so that kind of stuff. So keep it general if possible. If not, then you want to sort of um, provide maybe a little bit of uh, context around the responsibility and the role that you had, right? So as to why you cannot, you don't have to say, I cannot present numbers because blah, blah, blah. But mm -hmm. there is a way to demonstrate that you are very fluent and familiar with handling huge budgets, right? Does that make sense? So um, somebody keep me on time here. Uh, one last point I will mention on yours and then I'll move to the next resume is that, like I said, your resume is very busy. You want to, uh, once you change this uh, template, because you're using, look at how much space you're using on the left, white space, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Two and a half. Yeah almost yeah. wasted because it takes away from the space you can actually put your content in and you have way too many bullets. I think you took every single thing that you were doing in a day and you put that on your resume. To a point. Hmm. And but. we don't want that <laughs> because the resume is not, it's almost like if I were to write the resume to say, um, I answer emails every day. Well nature of the beast in today's <laughs> world that we live in, 
we answer emails because that's how we communicate. Or if I say I attend mm -hmm. six Zoom webinars every day because I meet with candidates or I do info sessions. Again, nature of the beast, thanks to the first yeah. pandemic that all of us are living in, right? Does that give you an example of what I'm trying to say? I'm not pinpointing specifically, but but I think um, overall you have a lot to sort of uh, you, you have you have the opposite problem of uh, some folks, which is like how do I put in stuff or am I short selling, right? So you don't have the problem of your short selling. You just need to like tweak in terms of presentation right. and make right. it much more. Uh, much more relevant to the goal, which is applying to B-School. And secondly, you want to highlight what are your important um, aspects and why are you a good candidate for B-School, right? So, so I would think, you know, if you, if you just tweak it around quite a bit, um, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be good to go, all right? Got it. Okay. Uh, I I think there's another thing, I, and I wanted to take your opinion on it, that the CV uh, is missing out on extracurricular and volunteering experiences, and how important would that be to highlight it over here? Over here. Extracurriculars, really, this is, this is a dicey, dicey um, bullet point, because not everybody has opportunity for extracurriculars. And True. the understanding of extracurricular activities as uh, we understand here in um, in the US to uh, given the opportunities that students have and how it is across uh, other countries is very different. So when you, mostly what I have seen when people write about extracurriculars is you say, oh, I played cricket, I played, you know, basketball or I did X, Y, Z. I, I don't, the good for you, <laughs> you're great fitness, but <laughs> I don't really want to know that because how is it advancing your application to B-School? Does that make sense? So this is again a generic comment. So the fact that you don't have it, don't look at that. So this template, for instance, is a good way to take everything in the kitchen sink, dump it on paper, and then become very ruthless and take an objective perspective and mm -hmm. basically cut things out that you don't think is important for B-School, right? And so okay. when you start doing it that way, you will notice that there's a lot in here that you can actually, I can tear this down if I had more time and if I was doing it only for you, which sometimes I offer to my students uh, when I mentor them, um, I will ruthlessly tear this entire thing down into a page. Mm -hmm. But I will not do that now. <laughs> so I, understand. I understand. I understand. All right. Understand. So, so you sure. can, can deliberately bring it um, into a very meaningful, sub substantive uh, resume, which is much more impactful. Okay. Got it. Got it. All right. So let me move on to the next candidate. Thank you very much. Thank um, you so much, Sri, for taking out the yeah, time. Really pleasure. Our so guest of the gonna, day. Yeah. Okay. You too. So let's move on to the next one, which is who is my next candidate? This is done. Ooh. Do I have to get out of the share screen, Prashant, to do this again? How does this work? Uh, to find the new candidate? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let me like pause share for a second. Mm -hmm. um, or stop share, I'll come back. So she, uh, two questions that uh, some candidates have asked, maybe you can ad also address them while yeah. you are uh, attending to the next candidate and looking at the resumes. One is what is what should be the ideal length, one page, two page, one and a half page. And second, okay. should the skill sets be mentioned with their verified certificates? Like do will they be required to produce some verified certificates? So these are some things while maybe while you are addressing the next candidates, you can uh, briefly answer. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, someone's chat message just popped in. Should we add in a LinkedIn profile link? First of all, um, you can add a LinkedIn profile link if you do have it, but most importantly, do not use all caps in a chat message. I, I feel like you're mad at me. <laughs> so all caps is... Uh, <laughs> is more for when you're emphasizing a point or email etiquette says if you are upset with somebody. 
Okay, so we're going to Gorov. Gorov, are you here? Can anybody, everybody see the screen? Gorov, do you want us to have to mute, unmute yourself? Maybe you can unmute and... Video and microphone, please. I think Gorov is not present. Yeah, it's, he's not present, yeah. All right, so let me move on to the next one then. Is Mani Gandhan here? And you guys can see this resume, right? Yes, yes. Okay. He's not here either. Uh, Mani, do you want to uh, join in? Are you comfortable switching? All right. Okay, so while we're waiting on him to join, I will take, uh, I'll address the skill sets question that you asked earlier, uh, Shivani, and the certification. So when you say you have XYZ skill sets, right? So if you are stating you have, um, uh, there's a way to write about what skill sets you have. Now, very common way of presentation is people will write and say, oh, I have, I'm proficient in MS Word and MS Office and MS, um, you know, uh, or specifically into MS PowerPoint and Excel. Okay, if you're using the Office template because that's your platform that you're working with at work or your day-to-day uh, -day activities, we all live in a world now where pretty much um, the majority, I could confidently say, is using computers and you are working on that platform. Putting your, putting it on your resume to say, you know, I am proficient in using MS Word and MS Office or MS Excel specifically does nothing for your resume particularly. It does not do anything to advance your candidacy. Does that make sense? So, it, if the rest of your candidacy seems to be pretty straightforward in terms of, well, I've been to school, I'm doing, uh, I don't have a lot of work experience, but I have maybe a year or two, and these are my responsibilities, and this is the skill set I have, it's better you don't put that in there because it's it's sort of a given that you will have computer language skills. I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say computer language because that would take you take us into like the Java programming languages. No, it's computer literate skills. Does that make sense? So if, if that's the only skill set that you want to highlight, I would say don't. But why I specifically mentioned MS Excel earlier, basic Excel certification or advanced Excel, is that is something you will use in B-School. You actually have courses in that where you will be using Excel analytics tools to work through your cases and your modeling or your forecasting and what have you. Right. So, uh, and Microsoft does offer you the opportunity to complete that course certification, the Excel certification. If you don't have it, that's fine. It's, I'm not saying you have to get it before you apply, but if you do have it or you have attempted taking some basic Excel certification courses, then you might want to list that. Um, at Whitman, we offer students the opportunity to actually um, take and earn take the classes and earn their certification while you are enrolled in the program. So we pay the subscription fee or whatever is that um, fee for the whole uh, module and to give you the access to learn and also take the test, right? So is, is Mani Gandhan missing as well? Hi, uh, is, Mani, see, I'm here. I'm here, okay. I just keep talking because I didn't see your image. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, so how are you? I'm good, I'm good, how are you? Okay, I'm doing well. Um, all right, so looking at your uh, resume again. Okay, here we go. Same thing applies to you in terms of your education should have been upfront, right? Sure. But, but let's look at your arrangement of your is this a template that you used? Yeah. 
yeah, okay. This is the issue with templates, right? They don't, they don't necessarily accommodate to how you would like to present things to move around very easily. So you have difficulty then as to what do you want to put where and how do you want to arrange your resume? So first thing that stands out when I look at this is your page one is extremely busy and your page two is kind of fluffy. That's not to say that you don't have content, like unless I actually read the content, it doesn't, you know, make sense, right? But there's too much white space here. Do you see that? Right. Yeah. And then the certificates are here and the education is down here. It's almost like the education is like an afterthought. Right. <laughs> Whereas your, <laughs> your history <laughs> begins with this, right? So let's move it up. And then what happens is um, same thing. Even if you do have to submit and um, submit a resume where you have to use an image because you have to have it's required and the, you know it's part of the application, that's not the picture I would put up there. Oh. Why? Because my first, uh, and oh, this is actually nice, um, which I didn't notice earlier. So if, if you see, I have a very spontaneous way of doing this resume review, like because I, I don't like doing structured review and writing stuff out because things jump out when you do, when we are actually reviewing applications and then we look at a resume or I'm talking to a candidate prior to the meeting, I always ask for a resume prior to my Zoom calls. And when I skim through, things jump out and stand out and I trust that, right? So one of the first things here, your name is listed, again, big, bold, all of that same stuff, which I critiqued for the previous candidate but it says director international business, right? And that's juxtaposed with this very casual party going college kid image. Got it. Does that make sense? Is yeah. that the image you're trying to convey? I mean, if that's what you're trying to convey, then I guess it works. But if that's not what you're trying to convey, this is a big no-no, okay? Oh, right. So uh, yeah, no, that image is not working. <laughs> It's not working. <laughs> and then um, you you might want to pick a different template, all right? Um, just because there are there are certain things which are um, which which should be in your main content. Keep the so so here's a generic uh, rule for everybody. Keep your resume as clean as possible without too much jazz in terms of um, unnecessary color components, unnecessary blocks of uh, things highlighted if you're not going to really put something in there. This is, unless you're applying for a job as like a graphic designer or something like that where you need to demonstrate your creativity in your resume because that is potentially looked at for those kinds of roles, right, in jobs. But academic, you're applying for B school. Again, keep in mind, why are you using the resume? And then you want to address that. So, okay, coming to your uh, work experience, the way you've listed your, um, and, and this could, again, just be the template issue because the, some of the templates have certain font sizes that doesn't allow you to change things too much. But what this does is like, you know, it's put your regional head Tamil Nadu in the name of the school and then your timing as to like the dates is really tiny. Okay, right. take pity on aging eyes like mine. Yeah. <laughs> and then like, don't do this because then we have to look around. <laughs> It's so like, okay, wait, how long did you do what? How many years do you actually have? And this is a clear example of um, how students view time as opposed to how we view time, right? So uh, it's uh, like when you go on a run, it's like some of my um, friends tease me about this because I'm a runner and they say, well, 3.7 is four miles. No, it's not. <laughs> 3.7 is only 3.7 miles, right? So the same way, it's like if you have a certain time frame where you think, well, I'm only missing three months in the year. No, you're missing three months in the year. So <laughs> you want your time frame to be exact because you don't want a gap anywhere. So, but if that's not visible, then, you know, we're going to be spending a lot more time trying to figure those kinds of things out as opposed to sticking with the actual meat of what you have, okay? So um, 
So yeah, so again, coming back to you have different, oh, I recognize names of some of these things. But, um, I think your you do have numbers, you do have percentages. So you have been able to give that, again, nature of your role and um, being able to demonstrate that you have management experience and you know you do have um, scaling up experience right so that's that's very interesting and it's it's um, but I think what you want to do so in your case what you would want to do is sort of identify um, you've stuck with it to a certain extent but you want to maybe identify specifically how you want to present all of this content, which is in a streamlined fashion. So maybe using a star template specifically for every bullet would work for you. So if you do the star template, if you're not familiar with it, it's situation, task, action, result, right? So I was in such and such situation, I performed this task, this is the action I took, and this is the result, right? So if you were to apply that, I think you you seem to have applied that to certain uh, aspects, but not throughout. So consistency is key. Um, and then when you're saying stuff like, for instance, in your very first role here, and you said generating 500K USD monthly turnover, hmm. because you're currently in this role. So the tense changed, <laughs> right? We moved from past tense to present. So now we're like generating this monthly turnover in what respect and how are we um, is it is it revenue is it capital investment into the school is it um, research development money what what is it right and um, for somebody who is not familiar with uh, and, and this could pretty much be all of us who are you know looking at your uh, your apps, we, we don't know the names of all the schools, right? Um, I'm from Chennai originally, and I don't know the name of the school. So I don't know if, it's, if that reflects on me, which, which it potentially could, but what you might want to add in a situation like this, because we also have in the US, like when you're talking about colleges, we say going to school, right? So you might just want to say maybe in parentheses K through 12, or whether it's a uh, or, you know, community college kind of thing. From five to 12, you know, so it helps us understand, is it elementary school, middle school, high school? What What is the range, right? right. So, so that gives a little bit of context into um, what, the, what the company is or what the entity is. So the other aspect is, is like going to the skill sets, which you've kind of, carpeted and pushed away into the left over here, like into, it's almost like writing notes in the margins, isn't it? When you were in high school, like, oh, the chemistry teacher is telling me something here. Let me write these notes in the margin. No, this needs to be prime and center. Yeah. And if you're saying, okay, I have all this expansion, execution, business, you've taken what would be some of your, um, mm, characteristic traits as a business owner or a business uh, manager. And you've also combined it with what could potentially be considered certifications, right? So you need to basically separate the two and you need to help us understand when you say skill sets, if you have a lot of them. So here's a generic rule. If you say skill sets as a subheading, you can differentiate because there are people who have multiple language skills, right? And they're global languages. So you could say language skills and then list English, French, Spanish, I don't know, whatever you have. I had a student who had seven different languages one time. That's huge. We want to see that. So put that in there. Then you could say analytics skills right. or computer skills, if you will, right? And then you could put your, your stuff about um, business analytics but is it a certification or is it you know something that you like google analytics or have you done tableau have you done you know matlab stats what what is it right so you could list that out then there is your um leadership 
Now, leadership, typically you could have certification or you could have done online courses on it. So you could list that as well. Like, you know, so so do you see what I'm saying? So you need to parse it out. You've taken everything and you've like, again, into the kitchen sink and dumped it into the side and lumped it over here because that was the section that was there. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then for languages, again, now this, these are specifically uh, relegated to Indian vernacular languages. Not that it's bad, because specifically when you're looking at um, uh, applying to schools in India, maybe that will have an impact. But when you're applying to schools outside of the country, you want to sort of think about it more in a global context. Right. Um, you could list it. It's nothing. There's no negative to it. But I'm also saying in terms of if you had the choice to uh, to take all these skill sets into uh, putting it under one subheading and then separating it out and just finish it off in a line as opposed to we've lost like a four by four square over here. Right. right? Yeah. Again, prime real estate. What are we building? <laughs> and then this interest, uh, just as I... I said that picture is a no-no. This is a no-no. <laughs> no, if it, not that it's it's. Uh... So so sometimes when we do profile evaluations for alumni profiles, right? Like I just I just wrote the questionnaire yesterday for for one of the alumni profiles that we want to start using, and there is one of one question in there. Fun fact that did not get included on your resume. That's where bike racing would pop up. Does that make sense? Yeah. Or you submit an app and then we say, oh, we want an interview. And then we're talking in the interview and then we say, like, okay, what do you do outside of uh, working and studying and doing all these certifications and stuff? Oh, I go bike racing. But right now in the space that it is in, it almost seems like. And of course, part of it, right? Because sometimes the templates won't let you move. So um, it's it's sort of just choosing the right template might be beneficial because these things, the way they are listed on the left actually takes away from the content that you have on the right. Like right now, the, the one that it juxtaposes with, if you look at the languages, it juxtaposes right with responsible for increasing revenue and asset utilization. Right, increased revenue contribution from asset partner by 25%. Okay, that's very meaty, meaningful stuff. But this on the left takes away from the significant. Right. Of that. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So, any last quick questions? No, I'm good. It's You're good. good. You yeah. basically like, yeah, she spoke too much and she needs to stop. Uh, no, I appreciate it. Thanks for being one of the brave souls to put this out there. I hope this was helpful. Yeah, and, absolutely. you know, so so it's it's overall, I think you have a lot of things, but there are certain things I, I sense uh, there is a certain reticence in some presenting some stuff the way you've presented it. So you just want to get a little bolder and be a little more consistent. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, have a good one. Okay, so what are we doing next, Shivani? Do I have one more candidate or did I not have two people show up? Uh, this Shriyans, I think Shriyans is- Shriyans is here. Shriyans, are you there? Yeah, so maybe you can also put up your video and audio if you are comfortable with it. Okay, so let me get out of this and pull up his resume real quick. Um, Sorry, I feel like I'm pretty disorganized here. Um, hi. Yeah, hi, Shians. Hi. Okay, why is this not working? Oh, I know why. Okay, so. Hello. Hello, Shri. How are you? you all good okay is that you yeah it's me okay so <laughs> again I, did you hear were you there for the first two that i was roasting yeah 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 I was <laughs> yeah there. so you 
basically, no, I'm going to roast you on that and that top. Uh, what is that? Almost three inches. That's that's gone, right? Yep, yep. So, so I won't repeat it. I won't repeat the roast. I will say, join your friends in the club. Um, so, moving moving to so again, this template, this template bothers me. Mm-hmm. And this, this is not just uh, to say that it bothers just me. Um, in in terms of when you look at uh, any recruiter looking at stuff, it looks like a very clean template, right? Mm-hmm. But what it does over here, the first thing, and maybe this is a liberal arts background kind of a thing, it's 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 almost like separating your light from the dark <laughs> because of the color that it has. Do you see that? Oh yeah. Now, <laughs> what now you've the- put in the so-called dark side is all your work experience. <laughs> All right. Does that make sense? Do you see what's happening? The, the yeah. first thing that hits you when you see this resume is not the significance of your work experience, but the way you've presented it. And that takes away from what should be the focus. Does that make sense? So yeah. again, keep it very simple. Keep it very clean. Just one, um, uh, what should I say? page in terms of your uh, content and very clean lines, right? Now in here, what you've done, and again, your career overview, and I'm sure this has been written for a job uh, scenario. So again, same things that I said to the previous guys applies to you, skills and abilities. um, You have a lot of these analytical skills. So this should entirely go into a section by itself, which you've done, but I would want this not in this dichotomous binary format. That's why you did it this way, didn't you? You're you're a computer <laughs> languages guy, so everything is binary. No, no binary format. Everything needs to flow. So um, if, if you start with your academic uh, history right up front, and, and not so much, I wouldn't call this so much academic history. So again, certain things, we don't need to see 10th and 12th. This might be specific to uh, certain institutions within the country, but US universities do not need to see this because we're assuming um, fairly so that you should have completed this in order to get your undergrad degree. Right. right? So sense. don't waste space in your resume on that, right? Mm-hmm. now. What you've done over here with respect to your academic uh, component with your IIT is you've taken the things that you did in IIT and you've lumped it all together. Yeah, actually, I've added uh, the PORs, uh, you know, positions and all uh, with the degree. Yeah. Right. So what this has done is it's taken away from what you could have potentially done at a later section uh, to say um, either, not necessarily, I wouldn't say you have to present extracurricular if you want to, right? Leadership activities or uh, event planning, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. But this is not what should be up here. The max you want to put over here is if you have any particular standout courses or if you specifically received uh, you know, like some recognition uh, if you want, unless you're including that again as a as under the award section or something like that, mm-hmm. right? Honors and awards. So so again, when you remove all of this, so because think about it in terms of uh, I don't know, I mean, I know I've heard of IIT, but I don't know details of every IIT. Um, Mm -hmm. in the country. So if I'm looking at Bachelor of Technology Mechanical Engineering, you're a senior member of the Students Coordinator Placement Team. Okay, so what? Hmm. So what is not answered, yeah. Okay, So and then you were a member of the Dramatics Club and you were a treasurer and member. Um, How does that connect with anything? You know, like that statement that we say, what's that got to do with the price of eggs? Mm-hmm. Understood. Yeah. So, so it doesn't answer that. All right. So, uh, she um, did you notice this seven point nine five? Is it zero yes. GPA or o- OGPA? It's OGPA. It should be or would it would overall GPA? Yeah, OGPA oh. change it to cumulative C- GPA. Hmm. Um, if you want to include it, then do it as CGPA because otherwise we will 
that's a good point, Giovanni. We <laughs> we both just rack our yeah. brains as to what that is. Yeah. Because <laughs> right. um, I've seen CGPA, I've seen GPA, but OGPA was looks a little out. Mm -hmm. so. Trans decided to get creative here and, and come up with that's terms. Not, not really. it's, it's actually no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Taking... You look like you can take it, so I'm picking on you. But <laughs> let's go down to you. So, the, so the problem with this format, this, this is really bothering me, is first page, it divides you into columns in the layout. Second page, it throws you into like an open system. So now I'm like, okay, do you have enough content up there? Do you not have content here? Like what is going on, right? So follow the second page format is what I'm saying. Just keep it straight and keep it clean, right? Now, what I do not like about the way you've demonstrated your work experience is where you've taken individual aspects of your uh, company's growth or, or content that you've been involved in with your responsibilities, and you've estimated a percentage of growth on the side, like you've said, estimated 1.5 times growth, mm -hmm. right? Or for digital marketing lapse users, you've put 10% lesser sp spends with 1.1 times growth, right? This is the first time I read your resume, I didn't even see that part. Okay. So when you were saying, you know, I led the company to cross the GMV from the pre-COVID level, I was thinking, but what was it before? Like, are you saying it, there was an enabled measurement of growth? Okay, from what to what? There's no, does that, are you getting what I'm saying? So it really takes away. And then is it really necessary to break it down into every single thing? So you've done what the first candidate did, basically anything and everything that you've been working on and you've put it over here. Is that really necessary to present it like that? Because you're not doing it for all of your hmm. Hmm. positions, right? So uh, I think I need to make it more concise and uh, to be more objective with the numbers, you know, instead of giving uh, something, you know, estimated this percent growth from this to this will be more uh, suitable. Right. right, so like even, even if you were to take just this example, digital marketing lapse users, right? Mm -hmm. You're saying here, you, well, don't do that. I have a touch screen laptop, sorry. So if I'm messing around. Um, Okay, so here, what is happening is you're saying provided best growth generating lapse audience for targeting, blah, blah, blah. Developed an automated way of seeing the growth. Why can't you combine the two and say that, you know, you actually reduce spending, but you increased growth? One hmm. sentence, done, boom. I've taken away three inches of space over there. Right. Does that make sense? So you want to sort of think about what's the most impactful, and you're a marketing guy. Yeah. Uh huh. You shouldn't be writing essays when you don't need to, <laughs> right? right? So, what's most impactful, mm -hmm. and how do you want to present that impact and showcase that you have done X, Y, Z through this? And again, star format, situation, task, action, result. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that applies to the rest of your stuff as well. So again, see here, drove various sales and targeted cycles. By what numbers? Unless I go up here, it doesn't say generated 20% more traffic from CRM. Okay, but that's specific to that. Now, if you're presenting it like this, I'm going to get even more nosy, right? And say, well, what was the actual growth in the men's grooming section? Was that 20%? <laughs> it was kind of more but the overall so see, now you have now you get into specifics right so you want to look at the forest for the trees mm -hmm. but you want to be able to generate uh enough understanding for us to say that you're familiar with marketing tools because we do offer a program in marketing management so if you want to be a candidate to be considered for that we want to see that your work experience ties in with that does that make sense yeah it does yeah so so work on all of your stuff that way contact details again this is what i said earlier in terms of you don't want to reveal too much so if you just want to put your linkedin uh, profile link and maybe a number to reach you in an email that's fine you don't have to give your um home address mm -hmm. given 
the unpleasantness in the world and the reality of the world that you know it's not entirely very safe so uh that's that's not entirely a requirement um okay now here's another interesting thing you are you all friends because this this uh money company was also up from in, yeah i'm sorry uh, even money was from oyo huh yeah, that, that's what I looked at that. And that's why I'm saying, are you guys all friends? So, okay, global app conversion, and then UK growth. Now, if you're generating something, if you're saying something global, this, this might be that you, in some cases, work for a company that's located elsewhere. And, you know, you're based out of uh, India doing stuff, or you're working with a multinational or a company that has multiple centers even within the country, but multiple centers, right? You want to see the, how you can conflate all of this to give the most um, input. So is it something worth saying that um, you, maybe a sentence right up front saying has multiple locations and responsible for region and global, something like that? and therefore helping us understand, okay, these were the responsibilities and these were the kinds of things you did as opposed to specifically. Because now what has happened, if you look at just this particular company, you worked here from November 2019 to August 2020, not a very long time, yeah. but you sort of seem to be taking everything in the kitchen sink and dumped it here to say, this is my day to day. Right. I don't want to see your daily planner. Does that make sense? to so give you an idea. So you want to definitely conflate this because somebody with 10 years work X also won't have this amount of content just for that short period of time. Got it. Got yeah. It. So, so change that up. And yeah. Uh, yeah. So one and a half pages. So. so, so page limit wise, you're okay, but only because you took this cheating method of uh, doing the, the two column layout <laughs> you cheated with the two column layout on one page and a regular single column layout on the second page right so that's cheating that's not allowed <laughs> but but i think overall you have a lot of room for improvement in terms of like reducing content and therefore highlighting the most important content right so in that sense you do have uh, space to work with and and when you reduce just this, yeah. it will it will bring down a lot of uh, it will open up a lot of room for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Understood. Quick questions. Um. Uh, just that uh, you know. So this CV was actually made uh, for job applications only, and uh, so uh, as you rightly mentioned, uh, a lot of themes or templates don't allow you to make a lot of edits so this was a template and yeah that's how it was you know name and also and actually uh, when you go to a website or a, you know let's say you go to canva.com and actually go through a lot of templates a lot of templates have these you know big names written on them so it sort of uh, you know uh, made me think that okay this is what, what it's trending right now they've not hired me yet they've not contacted me for consulting purposes of course. So, yeah, <laughs> no, but, but I understand it's, it's so you want to work with maybe instead of going to websites, start with if you use, um, you know, Windows, uh, I'm sure in MS Word, you can go do a template and look for a resume template. So go to Microsoft's page and try to find templates, right? Or even just the free templates that come with your uh, software. Mm -hmm. So keep it simple and keep it clean in terms of you have white space because it makes it easy to read multiple colors again strain the eyes like i said aging eyes yeah take pity and um you also want to be mindful of uh, font because you fit a lot of this content here because you reduce the font what is this calibri 10 <laughs> you and i don't know it's I just had it used because it is it is really tidy and unless I actually zoom it out it's it's not if I print this on paper this would be very very difficult to read hmm. right 
um, on, on the computer, it's easy to expand stuff, but otherwise zoom in and zoom out. But otherwise on paper, it would be very difficult to read. And some members of the admissions committee, don't forget, will print every single document. Forget saving the tweets. They will print every single document and uh, prepare dossiers. So you want to be mindful, keep it standard font. All right. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for uh, taking uh, the time to come here and like be open to critique and uh, review. So I hope this was helpful for you. Yes, definitely it was. Thanks a lot. Okay, great. So I'm going to stop the share. Um, I'm just going to quickly go through the chat. Is that okay? Do I still have time or am I like completely over time? Yeah, I think uh, so in the interest of time, we don't have time to take uh, other candidates profiles, but we'll yeah. quickly take the questions on the chat. Uh, so yeah. you can scrim through it. I think one question which pops out is about armed forces. There's a person who belongs to ex servicemen and he says that unlike civilians, they can't share their specifics and data of work done. So how is it generally present their experience in their CV? Maybe you have seen some CVs. Yeah, of so right, military experience, once you already list up front that you are from the military, um, it automatically kicks in for us that you know content will definitely be um, something that you cannot share specifics. But uh, like I said, there is a way to then demonstrate that you do have experience with I don't know, um, if you worked in the military with handling, let's say uh, supply chain management was the area in which you were involved in logistics and, and operations, then there is a way to say, uh, not necessarily maybe numbers in terms of budget, because we don't want to know the military budget or what you were responsible for in that sense. That's something you cannot reveal. But maybe then you want to focus on the types of uh, responsibilities that you're actually focused on so you know what was your day-to-day -day? were you responsible for handling daily cash out and don't put a number in there because then you're not revealing anything but you're just saying this was my role um or responsible for inventory and data warehousing or inventory management um and so of what type of items and and we don't want you to go into specifics if you were obviously in a sensitive uh, department, right? Like, so uh, you want to be mindful of what it is, like I said, with any company, whether it's civilian or government, you want to be mindful of the NDAs. What can you reveal, what you cannot, and if you haven't looked at your contracts because it's a past job, please do go back and look at it and be mindful of that. Um, there was a question that I saw in terms of ideal length of a resume. Keep in mind that even someone I have, um, I want to say uh, roughly about seven and a half to eight and a half years of work experience just in this field of um, management, education and advising and stuff. So if I'm listing stuff out, I should not go over max two pages, but I should be able to put things down into a page or just about a page and a half. Again, it's not about every single detail and every single thing that you do every day, but it's more about identifying the key points that you wanna address with, res with uh, respect to your particular role, okay? Uh, can you share a few formats that we could refer to? Do an online search for American business resume templates or US business resume templates, you should be able to see a few. I can't personally provide you with resume templates because um, there's not a particular format that we can use. But like I did say, the star format is something Whitman does encourage. Uh, our career center does uh, encourage people to put your content in a star template. So that's again, situation, task, action, result. So look for that and you'll be able to find content. Um, Okay, that's the armed forces, unlike civilians. Okay, and then undergrad degree, want to apply for MMS, MIM, don't have a lot of work experience. Okay, so for people who don't have a lot of work experience, please uh, look at the program that you are specifically applying for and try and understand the degree of the program, right? So specialized master's degrees in the US do not require students to have work experience. So if you have internships that you wanna highlight, you can. 
If you don't have absolutely anything, then you definitely want to highlight your skill certifications and present why you would be a candidate for a specialized master's program. That's designed for people who don't have work experience. If you want to apply for MBA, that gets dicey because technically you're not a candidate um, who would be eligible to apply for an MBA, at least without a year or two of professional work experience under your belt. And then when we say professional work experience, we're not taking internship necessarily into account. We will consider it as part of your overall candidacy, but when we say professional work experience of minimum two years, that means after you've graduated, you have two years of professional full-time work experience, not as a student, okay? Um, same font size throughout the resume. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> unless it's a heading and your heading could be slightly bigger, but the rest of it has to be pretty much the same font size. Uh, preferred order of sections, um, again, like job roles, details, education, voluntary tasks. Okay, this varies from uh, candidate to candidate because not everybody has the same things, correct? So again, keep in mind what we're looking for is understanding um, the the purpose, what you, what you need to do is understand the purpose. Most of the resumes that were submitted today were for jobs uh, and, and the resume templates that they used were towards geared towards uh, seeking positions. But when you're applying to an academic uh, institution, you want to make sure that you highlight the things that are relevant to advance your candidacy and why it stands out. So in that sense, I, I, like I mentioned in the in one of the examples earlier, 3.7 miles running 3.7 does not equate four miles, but really does it matter to you to know that I am a runner? How does it matter? It does not, has no connection for anything. Just because I mentioned that statistic or my ability, does that make me a better uh, recruiter? It doesn't, right? So you want to sort of see what are the skill sets that will actually advance your candidacy and, and highlight those. Um, uh, what are some other ones that could potentially be looking for MBA, for example, as an option of career change? How would you expect the resume to be presented? Well, we would like to see what um, work experience you are having and why you want to switch careers. So you can, the resume, okay, so this is a good one to segue into how it ties in with your um, letter of recommendation and your statement of purpose or your specific application essay, right? B schools don't necessarily ask you for a statement of purpose. They might have specific questions that they expect you to answer to the question. So if you are answering the application essay question, please note it is not a statement of purpose. Now, another way to look at a resume is, it is one of the triangulating documents. So if we have transcripts, which gives us content about your academic uh, competency in the classroom, in the particular discipline that you studied, you have your resume, which ties in with your education and your professional background and what you've done with it, either with internships or work ex. And then you have the letter of recommendation. So it ties in with third party folks telling us about your competencies that you have listed in your transcript and your resume, right? So now somebody else is commenting about it to give us a qualitative anecdotal viewpoint about that, right? So if you use the three of them, this is my way of saying this is the perfect triangle. Right. So look at it that way. So don't discount anything that you have, but also just recognize how you want to present it. Is entrepreneurial experience considered as full time work experience? Um, yes and no. It depends on when you had it, but it's not something that will be discounted. And when I say when you had it is there are students sometimes who submit an application uh, and mention that they started uh, a startup venture while they were in college. Okay, how much time did you actually devote to it? Did you make it like a full-time um, project or did you do it for X amount of time as part of your course requirement or did you try something out and then got bored with it and then you stopped? Like help us understand the context. But otherwise, if you are an entrepreneur 
and not necessarily uh, somebody with a corporate nine to five sort of an experience, then yes, we want to see your entrepreneurial venture and we want to understand what your entrepreneurial experience is as well. Okay, so what other oops, questions do we have? Um, I guess, is it fine to add links in the CV? That's what Sarthak has asked. Uh, keep in mind, again, if you add links in the CV, if in case somebody prints it out, they will not be able to view the links. So you don't want to put a lot of links. Of course, if you want to give us access to your, you know, a link to your LinkedIn profile, that might be okay, but not so much in terms of, uh, like, I, I guess sometimes students ask in terms of, you know, oh, my research paper got published on this website or on this blog post or on in this online journal, right? So you're giving us too many links. But if too much of your content is going to be on your resume only about links to your research projects, then already you're looking at a situation wherein you're more presenting a CV as opposed to a resume. So... Well, maybe I should have started with that. Please recognize and understand there is a difference between the word resume and CV. A lot of students conflate the two and use them interchangeably. That is not correct. Okay. A CV curriculum vita is for those who actually want to demonstrate their experience in an academic setting with research content that you are presenting and professional articles or scholarly articles that you want to highlight. And this is what you see when people are applying for PhD programs, right? When you go, because PhD is a terminal academic degree. When you're applying for MBA or business school specialized master's programs, we are interested in looking at a resume. A resume does not have research articles so much. If that's your experience, sure, you can, you know, present this has been my, my experience has been primarily in academic professional uh, settings or research settings, but not to list every single, you know, one of them in there because that's not the purpose, right? Always keep the goal in mind. So when you're seeing a business resume, we're interested in understanding your educational background. So what's your degree? What's your uh, professional background as it relates to the program you're applying for? Does that make sense? So that's one of the biggest... Um, things that I think usually gets missed because people use the terms interchangeably and so that it can cause confusion. Um, is it a problem or red flag if one shows simultaneous work experiences? I'm not entirely sure I understand that, but if you are saying that you have, you're working at a certain company and then you also have, you're running your own business, I don't see how that would be a problem, but help us understand how that is working you know are you doing it full time or are you doing it as like two internship projects or or what is going on um okay i'm just randomly picking things out as i scroll through here so my resume is like a plain resume i haven't used any templates for it will it be okay oh my god this is <laughs> adorable in a way so <laughs> again like i said um, using templates can sometimes work in your favor, but not also not work in your favor, right? As we saw some examples. Now, if you're using a resume, like you opened a Word document and you created your own resume, kudos to you because you've put in a lot of effort. The disadvantage of that is if you don't do your formatting correctly, you could be all over the place. So just be careful about that. And, and so, you know, as long as you're able to uh, fix the formatting errors, you should be fine. There's no particular requirement. Um, and so, okay, what else? Um, uh, let me answer that. Uh, if you might review a resume without a template for a change, I'll be honored to get my CV reviewed. Uh, yeah, that's asking a lot. <laughs> But I guess Jean Marie has to invite me for a second webinar. So based on your comments, uh, I will either get a second invitation or I will get a message uh, from senior management saying thanks, but no thanks. We don't want you. You talk too much, right? So, um, but I'm curious, you know. So just throw it in the chat box if you thought this type of a session was useful for you in terms of the kind of content that I've addressed. Because if it's not, then you know it helps both of us 
in terms of recognizing what type of session might work or not work, right? So um, somebody's asked you, Shivani, will we get an access to the recording of the session? Right. Yeah, we will put it up. Once this is done, we'll put it up on YouTube. So while uh, she's just going through your questions, maybe you can also, if you're interested in uh, talking to any of our counselors, maybe you can leave your name and number here on the chat because I think uh, we try to address everything, but maybe we are not able to address everything in the interest of the time. And you can also mail us at information at jamburiindia.com and we will try to contact you and clarify your doubts. And she, yes, we would like, love to have you back because I think this is a very insightful session that we have had. So it's an, it, so this is again, um, it's a type of a session where I think this is very, I, I haven't done one like this live. I mean, I do this with my students who reach out to me and ask for, you know, evals before they submit an app. But uh, I think it's, it's, it's an interesting uh, way for us as well to, you know, do a session like this. Because one of the things that I think candidates don't understand is that you don't know how much time goes in the back end for us uh, in terms of review committees to look at your entire dossier, right? So because you're looking at it when you're submitting an application as individual stuff that you are filling out and you're putting your heart and soul into it. So listen, don't think that we don't get that, we do. But at the same time, you need to put yourself in our shoes, right? Become self-aware of not only what you are doing, but also become empathetic to what another person is doing, right? Become mindful of the two. The other person is looking, probably a corporate recruiter probably will spend 30 seconds skimming your resume. I've done way more. I deserve cookies today, <laughs> right? <I> so <laughs> it's, you, that's the perspective you have to understand. So if I have 30 seconds to skim through your resume and I get four pages of content like these guys have put up today, um, I'm never going to get done. I'm going to do one resume for the whole day and I'm going to call it quits because yeah. I'm tired, right? Yeah. You will it's... never get through the volume. So you have to understand that. And therefore highlighting a resume is not meant to be a narrative. It's not meant to be your college essay for three pages and like 10 pages. It's supposed to be a snapshot of your work background, your educational professional background. So we understand whether you're a good fit candidate or not. So one of the first things I pointed out with Sushant's session, uh, not, not session, but resume, was like, it's very specific to the hospitality industry. So if he wants to apply for an MBA, the first question that would pop up would be, are you planning to switch industries? Right? Are you looking for a career change? And if yes, where do you see yourself going, if not hospitality? Because his resume was very, very to the, um, and it's a very different type of industry, right? That's not to say it applies to other. Marketing is something very generic. It can be in any industry, but his resume was very specific to hospitality industry, customer experience, revenue management with hotels, you know, stuff like that. So that's an, that's one, it, it's good to have that as an example to see because that's something you want to recognize when you're trying to present to a, a committee as to why you want to come into the program is it is one of the reasons being that you want to pivot and you want to pivot into a different industry, okay? Right. So I think there are a lot of takeaways from this uh, session which can apply to all candidates and uh, if you want to address uh, any final comments or uh, inputs that you want to uh, give Shri. I, uh, I, I know it's a lot of hard work for you today. <laughs> it's, it's okay, at least you don't wake me up at 4.30 today. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I'm a little awake, yeah. but. Um, yeah, kudos to you and kudos to all the students who have volunteered. <laughs> I hope we don't get too sued, <laughs> to be sued later, but it was fun. And uh, uh, personally, I enjoyed it very much. So that's the uh, time we have today, I think. And thank you all for joining this session and making it an interactive one. So yeah. Sri, thank you very much and stay safe.
Yeah, I'd say to all of you, thank you again for having me on board. Um, this was an interesting session. And um, one last piece of thing that I will give to students is, is generic content advice, not just specific to resumes, but also about your overall presentation. Because sometimes people will ask you to, they will have your resume in front of you and then invite you for an interview and say, tell me about yourself, right? to use the resume as a way to prepare your elevator pitch for that kind of a scenario. So if you go through this entire seven pages or four pages of your resume, like some of the ones that I critiqued today, you will never get through your <laughs> interview. You're, you're only gonna keep talking about yourself, which again, demonstrates lack of self-awareness, right? So you want to use the resume to segue into an elevator pitch. So what are some highlights that you wanna present and how do you do that? And um, yeah, so, so um, if you are interested in looking up uh, the Whitman programs, then please go to uh, our website. And um, if you want to reach out with other questions or comments specific to our programs, feel free to get in touch with me. So happy to... Um, be part of another webinar with Jamboree. Uh, thanks to you, Pushant, Manisha, everybody. Uh, so again, enjoy your uh, weekend and everybody stay safe, stay masked or stay home, socially distanced. And um, I'll see you guys next time. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.